welcome. This is Unfinished, the only place where we get to finish and finish matters. I hope you all are doing good because I am. Today we are talking about marriage, which takes us to our first question. Do you think marriage in this generation is a scam? Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm a believer of marriage. I believe in marriage is working. I am a believer that you make marriage work. Marriage is hard work. Marriage is not... Of course, they say marriage is not a bed of roses, blah, blah, blah. I believe in that. But I believe marriage will become what you make it. So you, you choose to work hard, you work hard for your marriage. Well, Lisema, you pick your uh, headache. So I, I believe marriage is not a scam. I believe it works. Yeah, marriage is a scam. Squeezy, you want to ni contract, Kisha. Yes. Ni scam sana sana. Kitambu upate marriage ile serious yenye mtaka. Asa hiyo watu wame prefer unao ukiwa sigisti msumbane kidogo alafu mkufe. Not really. 50-50. With this generation, it's 50-50. Uh, to me, uh, but to me, I'll, I, I'll call it a scam because I'm in this generation. Nobody nowadays get married for love. Everybody get married for their own reasons. <laughs> marriage okay it depends with the person when you get a right person it's not a scam but uh, nowadays eh, you're a lady though I'll talk uh, negative about ladies eh? uh, we love because of money we don't go there because we want to get married we go there because of money something yeah but when I'm okay uh, at some point it is and at some point it's not depending on the de on the decision between the couples kama watu wawili wameamua ku involve kwa marriage wanaweza wakaamua wao wenyewe waifanye hiyo marriage ikae scam ama wanaweza ifanya ikue real depending na extent ya love unajua nowadays love is based on how possible are you to care for the other person basically na kuanga kwa mwanaume if you are not responsible, mostly marriage in Akukalia scam because sema you want to have a relationship and yet you cannot take care of the relationship. That one does not mean Pia kwa saidia mwanamke awezi. If you have a woman who is capable of providing for the family, Pia nae anaeza for the meantime as you venture ways on how you can grow that family. So mimi naweza nikasema from my own perspective marriage can be a scam depending on the decision between the two counterparts. Not really. Not really. Today's marriage is not a scam. You see. Yeah, people people don't marry because it's just a rite of passage. No. It's because we need companionship and partners to be hold. Yeah, because uh, I think me nikiwa kama na woman like marriage leo ni 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 dem ni dem dio kila kitu yeah mimi kenye na contribute ni place ya kani watoto niko nao ninalea like hadi akisema vitu nafaa kufanya anasema kani watoto nalea nikiondoka naambiwa nime neglect watoto unacheki lakini yeye akiweza ondoka inasemekana maybe ni bwana yake alikuwa mbaya so i think ni scam mimi kwangu today's marriage i at some point it's, it's, we can't call it a scam, but it's, it's, it's not really, it's, it has been monetized at some point. Because, you know, if we check the marriage scenes of our, no, not our ancestors, but our parents even, a good example is our parents, they stayed in marriage for more than like uh, 10 years, 20 years with 8 kids, 9 kids, you know. But with this generation and the, the economy, in fact, not even the, the, the economy, the generation, the, the Gen Z, I think marriage has been taken for granted or something because weddings happen. Like a good example, okay, I don't want to use examples because I'm on media. Uh, people stay in marriage and when they see that, like, they don't, you know, they for good and for us, they are there for good. But they, for the worst part, part they, I think they leave. Because, you know, I think things are changing. Nowadays, you can't, like, nowadays, 90% or maybe 80%, I'm not sure, of the girls really follow money. You know, they, they get married to you if you have money. 
like everything involves money with this generation. That's my opinion. I'd say I look at it from two ways. First of all, the marriages that work and uh, the marriages that don't work. So for those who marriages don't work for them, it's a scam. But for those whose marriages work, then it's real. Also, we can't tell whether marriage is going to work because, you know, marriage is until death do us part. So until somebody has died, we can never tell whether their marriage has been successful. Okay, maybe no, no, some uh, very few people in this gener generation like one of its value. So, um, okay, so the same is that is that is an it's a scam and it depends on like the people, the like when you marry one and your partner and all that. But most people squeeze it don't really value don't really value it. In my opinion, and like the only kind of value. Of course, yes, because there's so many high, like uh, the the number of people getting divorced, or actually the number of people uh, because most of them they don't even do the marriage, uh, like uh, official they don't officiate the marriage. So because it's most of them is come with stay, so they are not taken so seriously because there are no documents. So it's like you can just go in and get out whenever you you want. So it's not taken seriously. Today's marriage is not a scam. It depends on the couple. Okay, when you want to choose a partner, you have to be wise on who you are choosing. You don't just meet someone uh, randomly or abruptly, then you say, oh, we're going to marry. So you must choose a step and a method on which you need to follow to find a good, a good, uh, a good wife or husband so that you can make a great couple. So I think um, the matter of being a scam or not a scam is not really about the setup, it's about the people who are in the setup. By this, I mean the couple. If the couple is genuine, so is the marriage. If they're not, then so is the marriage. So I think it's just all about you getting to find the right partner, getting to know someone very well, and realizing that you, you, you two can actually put up together for like quite some time. Which takes us to our next question. Do you think that after divorce, you guys should share the wealth equally? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Hey, I'm not a believer of a divorce, but in the event it happens, yeah, what a two kilam two and a half. We both contributed into the marriage. Whether it's me who made a lot of money or it's him who made a lot of money, there was a time that marriage was working, and there was a time we were happy together, and there was a time we both we both put effort into making the marriage work. So I believe that sawa tu wacha tu gani half ataka ma maybe ni mimi nilikuwa na pesa mob or ni yeye alikuwa na properties mob. Divorce, wealth, it also depends. Kuna ile wealth mme tafuta mke wawili and there's a wealth that too many patana. Why should I share with you 50-50 maybe even you don't have a kid with me? I cannot share 50-50. It depends also. My own point of view, uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not because Imali mtu alitafuta kama ni kama ni mwanamume na mwanamke if the woman contributed more wa kugeni hii mali anafaa at least apate 70% mwanamume apate 30% if the man ndiye alitafuta hii mali anafaa kupata 70 mwanamke apate 30 so hii 30 inakuja because maybe huyu mwanamke ungemwacha mapema angejitafutia mali ya Maliake. So the time yenye umemwestia ndio sasa ndio at least itakuwa reasonable kama atapata 30%. Lakini kugawana katikati uh, it's not a good thing. Kugawana katikati it's not. Yeah. Okay, in most marriages you come together, put the resources together, you work together to achieve your your you are to achieve your objectives. Yeah, so it's it's equally it's constitutional, it's constitutionally to share wealth after the divorce. So it depends. Ka ka mali ni mimi nilikuwa nimesaka yote ni yangu yote. Si fair. But ka tulisaka sisi wote. Yeah, 50-50 kosa. Okay, it it depends. Uh, I wouldn't mind sharing my wealth 50-50 with a lady who has spent with me more than 10 years or 15. Because you can't tell me you get married this week, then the next week you divorce me and you expect me to share my hard and wealth 50-50 with you, 
I, I believe, you know, one week, man. No, I, I, I don't believe in that. I, I, I believe in that only when the marriage has taken a long time. No. No, it is not okay. You, uh, I'd say both parties should share wealth based on their contribution, based on the ratio of their contribution. Again, um, sharing wealth equally will encourage, uh, might encourage laziness in some of the parties, and also it might encourage the, you know, getting into marriages because of that purpose in that I'm going into this marriage so that when after so that I can divorce this person after a short time and then I'll get a half of their wealth so it is not okay I just think people should get a share based on their contribution and contribution can also be determined non-monetarily in that if a wife contributed to raising the kids taking care of the family they can always calculate and see their level of contribution, then they can divide it based on that. Yeah, I, I think in a fact, share equally you need the things that you built when you were together. So when you're splitting up, in a fact, in the garden, so certainly like one, one person in a fact, and everything you work, if the two of you work together to build. So yeah, in a fact, we're divided. If children are involved, yes. Because uh, if, if you say like the children are going to be left with their mom and the dad goes with his share of money and the wife is left with his own, who is going to cater for these children? So if children are involved, yes, but if children are not involved, everyone can just go with whatever, they, whatever is theirs. Okay, in case of a divorce, um, I think uh, you need to, to go with what you came with. This is because, uh, you know, at some point we, we have, uh, okay, you might have uh, the couple working, working fully together to reach certain goals, but then uh, uh, in some marriages you find that there is only this one person who is focused in building up the marriage. So uh, maybe let's say uh, the husband is well off, then uh, the wife is taking advantage of this. Then now the wife finds another another guy of her interest. Then she now decides to write a divorce a divorce letter because she she understands and she knows she'll be given half amount of the wealth. So it's not good to divide the wealth. Instead, one should go with what he or she came with. Yeah, inafa inafa ivo. Mukienda mukienda ata kwa court inafa mshe mshe wealth equally. Kama ulikuja na mingi hizo ni zako, si, uh, simulio wana. Na for example, mkona na watoto, yes, azuma mkate katikati ndio, ndio mgini asi, asi teseke. Yeah, if you have accumulated it together, if I'm married, if you have accumulated it together, I believe, yes, we should share it 50-50. If it's yours, you came with it alone. <laughs> to me, I believe like mtu enetuna, kila mtu enetuna mali yake. I think this varies with different relationships. Um, in a point where children are involved, the woman should be advantaged and she should get more than 50%, probably 60 or 70, because they were raising the kids together, now it's different, she's raising them alone, it just makes sense. In a case where there were no children involved, um, I feel like kill to twenty nine actually could deny unless they were both taking part in building the world. Let's take a short break, we'll be back with two more questions.